anxious about tomorrow. Partly because I'm not entirely sure where my nipples are. I mean, I have a general idea, obviously, but at the minute, they're just these big bandages that have been there for two weeks, and I'm struggling to imagine what's underneath. At the face-to-face -face consult, he said they'd be standard male size, about 20 to 25 millimetres, like a 10 piece. I found it hard, though, trying to imagine how it was going to look, how I was going to look. So when I got home, I found an old cornflakes box, cut around some small chains, held two circles up to the bathroom mirror, moved them up and down, left to right, tried to visualise my future self. Cereal boxes are useful things when I think of all I've made from them over the years. Like the suit of armour I wore for show and tell at primary school, or the wings for the hat and the moustache that completed my Asterix outfit. Even in Sunday school, they became angels for the tops of our Christmas trees. Many years later, they prove helpful as nipple standing. You know, to begin with, my main concern was just wanting what was there gone. A flat chest and looking half decent in a regular t-shirt. Only wearing one layer instead of four. It sounds so simple yet, reaching towards that goal has been enough to bring me close to tears for years. Just thinking of a summer breeze moving for a short sleeve tee with no binder beneath. Freedom for air to move over my skin and pull the sweat away, rather than trapping it there all day. But once I allowed my thoughts nearer to the possibility of surgery, I started getting more focused on the detail. Nipple size and placement and scar shape all became important. And to be honest, I became slightly obsessed with the formation of the male chest. Like, I'd find myself on the 49 into town, staring longer than was strictly necessary at the shirtless guy opposite me. But I was just trying so hard to picture it. Me and him swapping places. I just hope, wherever my nipples are, that they're both alive and well. I wish they could send me some sort of sign or proof of life, but I can't see, I can only feel. So yeah, my mind's working overtime, overanalyzing every sensation I'm also feeling because it's not just incision splitting and stretching you have to worry about, is it? I mean, it's rare, but you hear about it happening. Rejection. Graft death, that's my biggest fear right now. You see, I do have some serious bruises going on and my right side is really bulging and swollen. That's another thing that's worrying me. What if my flesh is too warped and distorted for me to emotionally connect, to feel pleased about what I see and to identify it as a part of me. I guess joking about chest shopping is one thing when you're trying to pick a surgeon, but right now, on the day before actually seeing it, this is all feeling a lot more serious. That's probably why I've started talking to you again. I think it's almost like a type of muscle memory. When something big happens like starting testosterone or having top surgery, my thoughts just naturally bounce back to you. Not just the first trans guy I knew, but the friend who had my back when I needed someone to. I mean, 
sure, there are other people I can talk to, but doing this without you, there's still like this element of loneliness, a sort of Alex shaped void, I guess. I actually realised the other day that I'm the same age now that you were when you died and somehow that just doesn't seem fair. But even if I had a time machine, did I not fly in a DeLorean? I'm not sure I could change anything. A lot's happened since you've been gone, but there's also been a lot of waiting. That's the part that at times has felt almost kind of soul destroying. Not just the fact it's been over five years and counting, but also the uncertainty, the unknowing. The being told by the gender identity clinic I'd be seen in autumn, winter 2017, and then just nothing. That's why I ended up going private. I couldn't waste any more time waiting for a first appointment with the laurels that was only edging further away rather than closer. I would have done it years sooner too, but moving on to my own flat wiped me out financially. And even though I started saving again straight away, Two years later, I still couldn't afford surgery. That's when my mum came to my rescue though. She said, just book it. Do whatever you need to do. I'll cover it. I think that's partly why the reveal tomorrow has mushroomed so much in significance. Or the waiting and frustration, scrimping and saving. I've got so much invested in this. It really does feel as if every detail of my chest is like going to be under the microscope. When I was actually at the hospital, I was sat in my gown excitedly thinking, holy shit, I'm finally having top surgery. But you weren't there for me to say it to you. If I'm honest, Afterwards, I had this really strange mix of feelings going through my head. I mean, don't get me wrong, it really was a weight off my chest. But I think my mind was also in a kind of shock. I mean, there was suddenly all this extra space and room for my chest to move and rise. And it was like this lack this absence that was so refreshing, it was almost overwhelming. In some ways, I just couldn't seem to believe that it was real, that I wasn't going to open my eyes in the morning and find them magically resurrected. Like, they were going to find a way back from the grave to forever haunt me. That's what I'm still struggling to grasp. They're gone for good, and no one can take that away from me. You know, lying in bed last night, I started thinking, it's surprising how fast I'm actually healing. Now that I'm two weeks post-surgery, I'm nowhere near as sore. Wriggling out of bed and shrugging off my pyjamas is much easier, and I'm edging closer to vertical posture. The human body really is pretty miraculous. And I don't just mean other people's anymore, but mine. I think for the first time in my life, I feel grateful towards the skin that I live within, which is a nice surprise. I'm now starting to imagine what it'll be like when I'm fully healed. I think it's the little things I'm looking forward to the most, like leaning in for a proper hug without all that awkwardness getting in the way. 
Going out for a jog, joining a gym, hell, even running for a bus will be a better experience. You know, Alex, when we first met, I don't think I would have believed all the anxieties and fears that I've managed to face to make it here. You taught me so much, and I don't just mean how to make the best fried breakfast. That's a legacy I'll always carry forward. I am still scared about tomorrow and how I feel when my new chest is revealed. I mean, these results are going to be with me for the rest of my life and no doubt in an ideal world you'd still be here to reassure me and probably give me some terrible advice. But I think we both know, no matter where my nipples are, I'm going to be fine. In fact, once all the bruising and swelling goes down, a lot better than fine. Wish me luck for tomorrow, mate. Love always. Mm -hmm.